Good afternoon. For today's video, we're going to take a quick look into a, a really cool display. It's a round display by WaveShare. I think these things been out for a year or two now, and I've always wanted to work with those. I don't know why. Maybe it's I wanted to do some retro video stuff, like a like a old fashioned round TV. I don't know, but nonetheless, I picked up a couple of them. I've incorporated one into a project already, and this particular one I'll be showing you now is part of another project. Uh, they're very cool. Uh, this one is only 1.2 inches in diameter, so it's relatively small, about the size of a large watch. And of course, that should be a clue as to what some people are making with these. This one is SPI interface. Um, and I will say right off the top, I did start out using the WaveShare uh, supplied libraries, and I found them to be very lacking in performance, very, very slow in uh, graphics. And luckily, I searched around and stumbled across a fellow named Russ Hughes, who developed a, a library that was written in C to make the graphics uh, perform much faster. And to me, that made it really worthwhile because I really wasn't happy with the original drivers and so forth. And I certainly didn't want to go through the trouble of creating my own. So he, uh, uh, I'll mention him and I'll take you to his website in a moment, but the cool thing is, is uh, he embedded this library in a UF2 file, and it's on version 1.2 right now, uh, so it's pretty well up to date, and you just download the UF2 file, put it into your uh, Pico, and you're good to go with his library. You'll do your imports just like you always do everything else but it's all ready to go for you, and it is very high performance. But before we get into all those details, let's just take a quick uh, look. I wrote a little demo here um, to show you just some very basic capabilities of the display. So we'll take a look here on the bench, and we'll give it a run. Rather simple, uh, nothing real elaborate there, but you get to see uh, some various uh, text functions, uh, basic line drawing, uh, bold line drawing by drawing several lines next to each other, uh, uh, rectangle, filled rectangle, uh, text in a couple different sizes with different background colors, different colors all around. Uh, and it's really quite easy to use, and that's one of the great appealing factors of this, this display and that library from that fella, Russ Hughes. So let's uh, take a quick look. Uh, first, let's go to the data sheet, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, wiring diagram in Fritzing, and you'll notice that uh, it connects straight up. These are actually flying leads that come off of it with a connector on the back of the unit. I'll show you here. It's got a cable that plugs in very nicely. And then it's got uh, the flying leads that come back and plug into header pins. Um, and I would recommend that uh, you do that uh, carefully. I was using uh, some of these types of jumpers in between the header pins or between uh, the a breadboard and these wires, and I was getting all kinds of intermittent problems. I dumped that off, pulled it off the breadboard, wired it up direct, and magically everything worked much, much better. Uh, but nonetheless, you've got a handful of wires here. This diagram is color accurate to the cable that came with my display, and you'll just connect it up as shown here. This, of course, will match the information that comes from uh, WaveShare as well. Well, I shouldn't say comes from. You'll have to go there and fetch the information to, uh, to their website. Uh, so from that, we will go to um, this uh, website where I found this driver. And again, it's a GitHub site, Russ Hughes. Um, the uh, URL is copied into the actual program. So you can copy it out of your Python program, uh, post it into your browser, and jump over there. Uh, but it's uh, 
all in there, all in, encompassed or all inclusive with that uh, UF2 file. Uh, what do I want to get into here? Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit of it, uh, what it can do. Um, and I'm nowhere near using all the capabilities. But the part I wanted you to see is uh, his document here is actually just a teeny bit old on the version. It's now 1.2. And uh, these are the different firmware versions he's got for it, uh, for ESP32s and the Pi Pico and Pico W. Uh, and he calls it, this is a work in progress, thank goodness. And uh, boy, uh, just a huge thank you to, to Russ for creating this. Uh, it's just been a pleasure to work with. Uh, if you want to make it yourself, uh, compile it and all that, he's got directions. And then some working examples and demo programs, things of that nature. Then he goes through and explains all the methods here. And these are a lot of the things that I just used to create this little demo program I just showed you. Uh, so I really won't go through a lot of detail on this other than to point out it's got a, a fair number of graphic primitives. So you can do uh, some relatively interesting things with it. Now we'll take a look at the code. Um, I think I've got it pretty well documented at the top. I've included some uh, color color coded things here. These are built into the library, so you can just use black instead of uh, hex number. Just makes my life a lot easier, and I'm sure everybody else's too. We're going to need a, a variety of libraries. Um, specifically, of course, we will need from the machine. We'll need a pin library pin and the SPI uh, module or library. Uh, math isn't really needed for the display. It's there for uh, something I just wanted to add in uh, in order to draw an arc and or circle. We're importing this library that comes from inside the UF2 file, so it's already in your Pico. I'm going to import uh, four different fonts here for use uh, in this demonstration. Uh, we've got a 16 by 16 pixel, 16 by 32 pixel, 8 by 8 pixel, and then finally uh, in bold a 16 by 32 bit or 32 pixel uh, font. And then we're going to import the uh, from the time library import sleep to slow things down a little bit. Uh, we just simply need to configure and start up the SPI interface. Pretty, pretty much just follow along with what's here. It's all the pin connections uh, that I've shown in the wiring diagram. These two libraries, get angle for line and plot arc, those are ones that I created uh, just so I could show you how you could implement an arc or a circle drawing routine. So we'll touch on those a little bit later. But here's uh, essentially what we're going to look at um, for the demonstration. To uh, clear the screen, so to speak, you're going to, uh, I should back up, uh, I wanted to get back up to here. Uh, here is where I'm saying TFT uh, as my object, and then I initialize it here. So you'll see TFT dot is all the uh, references for the GC9A01 library. Uh, so we're, if we want to clear the screen, we would do a fill and specify a color. And uh, this nomenclature here equates to these color numbers here. And then uh, I, when we run this, uh, I'm going to add a longer pause here so we can see it on the display, but uh, I will print the word white at the bottom of the screen uh, in a white font and blue background. And then we will print or draw three lines horizontally midway down the display, and then a rectangle slightly above that and in the center of the display. And then we'll fill that rectangle uh, with the color cyan. So we'll run that real quick. And that's what you see there. And I'm hoping that's visible on the, the screen there. Let me try to reposition this. I'll fiddle with this a little bit. Maybe I can get it a little bit better so you can see it uh, better. Bear with me a minute. 
Okay, and here we can see it a little closer. Uh, hopefully you can see enough detail there. I do apologize. The camera that I use for that uh, it does not uh, handle color interpretation very well. Uh, but you can see the graphic objects, uh, as you can imagine. And uh, they do look a whole lot better on the actual display than I can show you on the camera. Uh, but that was just drawing a couple of lines, a rectangle, and a filled rectangle, and then, of course, some text at the bottom. Now what we'll do, we will show you some text. And if we look at the code here, the... Uh, Again, we use fill to erase the whole screen, and I'm using font 1 and font 2 that I imported up here. Font 1, font 2. And uh, I put the text of what those fonts are called, and uh, their position, and x-coordinates, and y-coordinates. And the coordinate system is such uh, that is very typical of many graphic displays. It is 0, 00 in the upper left hand corner and it's 240 pixels wide by 240 pixels tall. So lower right hand corner would be 240x, 240y. This is the foreground color and then the background color. And as you can see up on the, on the actual camera view of it, the background is black and we've got white text. I'll run another example here. And now I'm showing you like a clock face for 12 o'clock, 3, 6, and 9 uh, in a very small font. Font number uh, 3 is uh, uh, 8 pixels by 8 pixels. Very, very tiny, but that can be handy on certain projects as well. Again, white text with a blue background, and these are the coordinates in X and Y as to their location. Now we'll run another one with even a bigger font, roughly in the same location. Here you can see pretty darn clearly, and actually a real nice scale if you're doing a clock face or a watch face. Um, where we can see, again, the 12, 3, 6, and 9 in the roughly approximate positions. And uh, this time it's yellow text on a black background, and it does give a really nice, sharp look and feel to it. This next section here is going to add a little bit more uh, razzle-dazzle to it. We're just going to... Uh, Draw the same things over again with a brief pause, and then we'll throw up some little lines radiating out from the center toward uh, the numerals on the clock face. And we'll polish it up a little bit more with the last function here, where we draw a bold circle, and that's accomplished with this plot art function that I've put up above. And that just takes and draws a series of lines uh, using trigonometry to uh, plot out a circle. And uh, we just specify the parameters uh, in this function as they are expected up here. Uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to uh, use two functions for this. We are, of course, calling plot arc. We specify x center, y center, start angle, end angle, delta angle, incremental angle, uh, the radius on the inside edge of the line, and the radius on the outside edge of the line. And it's provided a color to draw it in. And then we're just going to increment through uh, an angle starting at the starting angle. And uh, as long as it's less than the ending angle, it will uh, need to get the x and y coordinates for start and end of the line using this function, which is up here, which utilizes the math library within Python 
to perform all the trigonometry necessary to get the x and y coordinates. Those are returned to the function, and then we plot the line and move on and so forth. And it's really quite simple, a very basic trigonometry and geometry drawing, but it gives us a little extra uh, function out of this very cool library and, of course, uh, adds a little better way to decorate some of the displays. Uh, that's all I really wanted to get you familiar with at this point. I think it's a really cool uh, display. It's got uh, a really nice library created by that uh, Russ Hughes fella. Uh, just an, uh, a tremendous amount of appreciation I have for the guys that do these libraries and make it a lot, make these uh, uh, sensors and accessories a lot more accessible to us and much more efficient than uh, what sometimes is supplied with the devices. Now, coming up, this is the display. I'm going to be using an tachometer project that's coming up, and you'll probably see um, that within uh, a few episodes from right now. It's actually already done, and, and you've probably even been looking at it occasionally in some other videos and didn't even know it. And uh, so we'll be going into that video and we'll uh, polish up this display capability uh, where the display for uh, the tachometer is a little more graphic, a little more, uh, in my opinion, cool looking. But what do I know about cool? I'm an old guy. Uh, but we'll put that together. We'll put it on my little mini drill press and uh, we'll get uh, everything functioning on there real nicely. So that'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.